All right, so we got the forge burning here, and uh, got a good beehive built up in here now. We can work with. Which means we got a big area of coke that's crusted up, and that'll create like a blast furnace inside of our forge. I thought we'd make a simple project today. We're going to make a Dutch oven lid lifter. It's a tool that you use to lift the lid off your Dutch oven so that you are far enough away from it, you don't have to grab the handle of it with a glove. This actually slips into the handle, locks down, and you pick it up so that you can check what's inside of it or so you can rotate the lid if you're doing camp cooking, which we'll talk about more in the very near future. For now, let's get a tool built. Stay with me. All right, so we got two pieces of stock here, three inch rebar. We got one that's 18 inches long and one that's probably 12. I got one here at six too, and I haven't decided which one I'm gonna use yet. Um, we have to cut one of them off just a little bit. First thing we're gonna do with this one is we're going to create the handle. So we're just gonna get this thing heated up. Turn our ball on here. Open up an area down here we can get to. Get this rebar down in the fire and get her going. Once we get this heated up, we'll start forming our handle. Alright, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to draw this thing out. We could have picked a heavier hammer for this job. So we're going to draw this out to a square first, and then turn it into a point here in a minute. We're going to get a little heavier hammer in our hand here. Get that bigger one. We don't need to leave this blast on all the time while we're working. We only need it when we really need heat. Otherwise, we're just wasting coal. Okay. All right, so we started square. We're just going to pound those corners down and get this thing to go around. Get ourselves a nice even taper going on here. We can always straighten this out after the fact. Don't worry too much about that. I actually straighten them up a little bit before I go to the next heat. Now this anvil is a little bit high for me. An anvil is good height if it's about right where your fist drops down as the top of your anvil. So this is about three inches high for me, really. My anvil is just about perfect for me, but most of my students are taller than I am anyway. We almost burnt that thing up. When it starts sparking like that, you're getting welding heat. You don't want that. Okay, now all we're going to do is just come over here and kind of bend this over the, over the anvil like this. Just use our horn to form it. Alright, so now we're going to close this thing up a little bit more. Like that. And we're going to kind of come back against it to make kind of a shepherd's hook out of it, just like that. Open him up just a shade, put him on the anvil and moving him down. That'll open him up. Hit the back of the curve. If you want to open it up, hit it in the curve and it'll open up for you. Now we're going to bend that back on itself. So we're going to heat up a little area below that on the rebar. 
All right, we got this foot jack right here, foot vise right here. So we're just going to put this, lock this handle into it, just like that. We're going to turn it right over on itself, just like this. Okay. Now we're going to heat it up. We're going to wrap it. Well, I apologize. I don't think you guys even saw half of that foot vise stuff there because. I had the camera turn the wrong direction. Square that up a little bit, like that. Turn that point all the way down so it's out of the way. It just looks like it's wrapped around that handle like that. Make sure it's good and straight. Then we'll normalize this by letting it cool down and then we'll work on the front. Alright, so the front end of this thing, we just want to draw it out, kind of a flat, almost like a chisel point, and then put a bend on it, and flatten him up a little bit here. Get him good and square. Okay, now, we need to put a bend in this, but the next thing we need to do is we also need to put another piece on here. So I'm going to get myself a spot right here and start to flatten it out, just like this. And I'm going to widen it a little bit so that I can punch a hole in it. Because I'm going to pin another piece of metal to it that's going to be a U-shape. Another piece of rebar. Now the good thing about a punch for hot work like this is that thing don't have to be heat treated or hardened or anything. It just could be a normalized piece of rebar would work just fine. You just sharpened up. Now we're going to drift it a little bit deeper. Probably end up chasing it again. Cool this thing down after every time you use it. It'll last a lot longer. Now we drifted that whole out a little bit. Kind of making every shape, make sure everything's straight the way we want it here. And we're going to kind of clean things up real quick and see where we want to go with our horseshoe that we're going to put on the back side of this real quick. Okay, so now we're just going to come in here and clean this dude up, see where we're at. We know this front flat's got to be turned out some, but we got to put a horseshoe on here still yet, too. So we're going to make that first. And then we're going to come back to it. Straighten everything up one last time. And then we're going to get our other piece in the forge. You know, I never made one of these before. So this is this is a matter of figuring it out from pictures I've seen of these things. I just wanted to make my own. And that's part of the beauty of blacksmithing is that you can make your own tools. So this whole design really, you know, is kind of unique or will be unique when I'm done because it'll be something that I made that's different than what other people have. Um, this snaky handle on it is just a little extra I put on there just for decoration because it's just a piece of rebar obviously. So I want to decorate a little bit but what we really need now is we need something that's connected to this that's got feet. So this goes under the lid handle and then when you lift it up those feet sit in there and lock in. That's what we need to do next. So we're just going to take this piece of rebar that's heating up here. We're going to stick it in our pritchel hole and hope it's about even. And we're going to bend it. Just like this. And if we get off a little bit, we can always come up and grab a little different bite. Again, 
don't forget, you got the foot vise. That'll allow you to manipulate that metal too. If you got one side that's a little bit long, pound on the long side and it'll get shorter. Trust me on that. And once you got that thing about even, we're gonna have to put, we're gonna have to spade these front ends a little bit, and then we're gonna have to flatten the middle, punch a hole in it. So, the next step here is to grab a hold of this dude, just put a flat out here, about the same width, the same length. On both sides of this bent over horseshoe. Getting close there. A little more heat. Now remember that once we get this thing assembled, we can do a lot of manipulation because we have this foot vise. Very, very handy this thing. We can do tight bends and things like that with our scrolling tongue. We can do all of that in this foot vise. So right now we're just trying to get all the pieces where we want them, get them shaped the way we want them, and then we'll go about the process of bending everything where we have bent. Okay, these are pretty even. It's pretty good. Okay, that's not too shabby. Now, we'll go ahead and hammer out the center here. Get it kind of spread out so we punch a hole in it. Tell you what, probably the first thing you want to make yourself, you get a forge, is just a little tool that you can dig stuff out of that fire with. Just a little hook tool. Alright, now we're going to come in here, right back to the center, and we're going to hit this thing with a fuller hammer. Flatten it out just like this. So we've got the peening side of our hammer. And we're putting a flat in there. Straighten this back out. Alright, now we're going to worry about shape a little bit. And kind of make sure that this thing's evenly bent. Before we get too much more excited. These uh just a piece of hook, straight flat stock like that that you can dig down in them coals with. You drop something down in there or something gets buried up in there where you can't get it with the tongs. Man, I'll tell you what, it saved me more times than not, I can tell you. Simple tool to make, a couple of easy bends, but well worth the effort. Just to have it hanging on the side of your forge. Works real good for manipulating your piece. Get it where you want it to heat. Keeps your tongs from getting too hot, sticking them in the fire, holding the piece or messing around before you gotta grab a hold of the piece. The hammer on it. Lots of advantages to that, I can tell you. Okay, let's see here. Let's pound this down just a little bit this way. It actually did fairly well right there. This needs to be bent in just a little bit. Bend that dude over the horn a little bit there. That ain't too bad. You tell me you bang the outside of a curve. You're going to open it up a little bit. That's pretty good right there, I think. Now, we need to make sure that we got the center good and flat so that we can punch a hole in it. We need a little bit more thinness out of that before we punch a hole in it. Okay, now we've got that center thinned out from the peen side, the cross peen side of the Swedish hammer. We fullered it basically by moving the metal. We don't want to get too thin though because if we get too thin, it won't be good because we're not going to heat treat this or anything. We're just going to normalize it. So it's 
going to be about the same consistency as rebar always is. But if we get it too thin, we're going to be putting some pressure on this thing with that lid every now and then. We got to watch that. We got our punch sharpened back up again. Might go hit that one time on the grinder real quick. Turn the air off of this so we don't melt our piece. All right. Turn our air blast back on here for a minute. Come in here and clean this up just a shade. Get our punch on here where we want it. Try to get that about centered as we can. Get it started. Get it over the pritchel hole. Now you can see how that's bending a little bit right there. And that's because you got a thin piece of metal you're working with. So you're going to have to be cognizant of that when you're driving that punch through there. So what we'll do is we'll heat that up and we'll bend it back straight again and we'll punch it again. It's a process. Alright. Let's kind of straighten this thing back out a little bit, just like that. We'll get back after it with the punch again. There we go. All the way through. Knock him off of there. Back in the fire so we can straighten him out. It should be ready to pin this. Okay, now what I've got here is I've got a just a cut off 16 penny nail that I'm going to use to pin this thing together with. I've got a fullered side here, and that's going to go around the curved side of my piece. Probably punch that through one more time just to clean it up. Right on the edge of the pritchel hole here. Just like that. Okay. That dude we can manipulate after the fact now to get what we want for our lifter. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we need to do an assembly here. So we're going to put these two pieces together. Okay, so we're going to start to assemble this right here on the anvil face. And a good variety of hammers is going to come in real, real handy for you. So we're just going to get this thing flattened out here. Start to peen this nail over a little bit at a time. Just pushing side to side with this hammer. Why they call it a ball peen hammer. We're peening over things like this. Once you get a pretty good sized head on there, it smacks out pretty good. It'll tighten up pretty fast for you after that. Like that. And then the whole thing needs to get bent like this without pulling it apart. So what we may have to do is we have to weld this. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to scrub this down real good. Scrub this down real good. Borax this dude. We're going to weld it up. Came a little loose there anyway. So that'll let that borax get in that joint. Now let's get this dude down in here. Right in that blower. That dude hot. Okay, I think we're welding. For sure. Now, we go back to our bending. Okay, so first thing first, this right here needs to be bent straight up from there. Just like that. These need to come backwards this way, this way, and this way. And then them feet need to get splayed out. And they need to get splayed out probably the other direction. Let's get this thing cleaned up 
and see where we're at. We may not be too bad off if we just bend that up a little bit, but I think we need to turn them feet too. We'll turn those feet now just a little bit with the bending tongs. And then we'll check it against the lid. Okay, so again guys, this is all experimental for me. Because I've never made one of these before. Yeah, that's not hot enough. It's trying to bend here instead of where I want it to bend. We gotta get that a little hotter first. The metal's only gonna bend where it's hot. So you really want to get the area you want to bend a specific spot, you want that area really, really hot. That's a little bit, a little more than this one is, so we probably need to spring this one just back just a shade, just like that. That pretty much evens that up. Now, I think this hook needs to be a little bit more hooked. Okay, I think we're actually going to take this part here, turn it over the horn just a little bit. Kind of like that, just to put a real good hook on it. Point it up to the shade, just like that. Remember, if you hit the bend, it's going to unbend. All right, that's not too shabby. It sits pretty even like that. I like the way that's looking right now. Let's get this thing heated up and cleaned up. And then we're going to check it against the lid and see. What we came up with there on the fly. Okay, so here's the lid to my number 10 Dutch oven, which means it's a 10 inch Dutch oven. It's about two quarts, something like that, I believe. And the way this thing works, or supposed to work, I'm about to find out, I reckon, is the hook allows you to lift up the lid and rotate it so that you can get even cooking by rotating the lid while you're cooking your meal because you're not going to get even heat from the coals that you have on top of here, especially if you're using hardwood coals out of a campfire. So you rotate that lid every 15 minutes or so, a quarter of a turn, to get even cooking. If you want to pick the lid up and kind of take a peek, you can just wrench it up like that, take a peek inside at your food, see how it's cooking. If you want to lift this thing up and shake the ash off of it, so you can put more coal on there because ash does nothing but insulate. It doesn't really do anything for the cooking. It just insulates the coal that's on there. So you want bare burning coals on there if you can get that. So that allows you to shake the ash off of there as well. And then it also allows you, like I said, to just pick it up a little bit off the pot to see how your food's cooking. So I'm pretty happy with the way that thing turned out, to be honest with you. Uh, especially for just looking at pictures of them, really, and never seeing one exactly like this. I wanted to give it my own style. First project off of the new forge and the new forging equipment for the students. Turned out really well, I think. We did some, we did a lot of stuff here. I mean, we did some bending, we did some drawing out, we did some drifting and punching, we did some forge welding. We did a whole lot of things in this little small project right here that students can do out here at our blacksmithing classes. So, there you have it. Alright folks, well I'm Dave Canterbury with Self-Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. I appreciate you joining me today for another video on making a forged lid lifter for a Dutch oven. I appreciate your views, I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, and for our business. For all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends, and I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks guys.